So you know what I find fascinating is thinking about how many people actually start an exercise program but just can't seem to commit or stick to it. So yeah, then we've all done it. You start a program but just not able to commit long term. Yeah, I, I see it all the time with my friends. You know, they mm. um, they look at what I do and they say, oh, I'll come along, I'll, I'll come to the gym. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, they come along, they'll do, they'll do one day of CrossFit. Yep. Um, or back in the days when I, you know, when I used to do triathlons, mm. um, I get people say, oh, that's great, you know, and it's, it's, it sounds awesome, mm. and you're in a group, and then they'll come along and you introduce them to everybody and you make them feel welcome, and they do a few rides or a few mm. runs, and then, you know, they drop out. And, and I've seen it time and time again, doesn't matter what sort of exercise, mm. just get people coming through who, you know, they kind of think it's a good idea, mm. but they don't enjoy it, or it's it's just, it's out of their way, it doesn't fit the schedule, or just a thousand and one reasons. So, what do you think it is? Because, I mean, is it, I guess, if you could tap into that and figure out why people didn't stick to their committed exercise or their... You know, let's let's join a friend at the gym or what we're we doing. What's the key? Is it, is it something in the type of exercise? Is it the is it the exercise they did when they're growing up? Or what's the, what's the key to, to get in that trigger? Do you know, I, I think it's a whole range of things, mm. and di- different people are different. And I've I've seen people over the years who you know they they've picked the wrong thing. They've yep. picked a type of exercise that doesn't suit them, or mm. they've picked an exercise that they don't enjoy, mm. or like I said, it, it doesn't fit to their schedule. You know, they're busy, mm. and they've a really good example. I had a friend who she really wanted to go to a fancy gym. She just had this big thing, uh, <laughs> and that, that yeah. her, her whole personality. She loved um, fancy, beautiful clothes. She's a bit glamorous, was she? She was a bit glam. <laughs> she did like. She always bought the best. Did she wear makeup to the gym? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> always wore makeup. To the gym. I don't laugh. A lot of people do that. Hey, I laugh because we laugh at them. We look at them. Well, not we, but the collective people who don't wear makeup to the gym. And I, I mean, I put a little, put a little bit of lip, on, <laughs> lip gloss, but that's all I wear. <laughs> but it is fascinating to see how many people do dress up to go and then sweat. And exercise. Sorry, well, go on. No, Your friend. Let's just digress on that for a second. I think it's fascinating, and you know, maybe we should we, we should dive into this a bit because <laughs> I do think, and I'm not one of those people who dresses up for really? the gym. I have my outfits, but they're functional. Okay. You know, they're functional. They're the right sort of shorts. Do they match? Not always, okay. but probably ninety percent. Because there's been some complaints about I what you wear. Like yeah. I do like matching. I do like a bit of matching. And a bit, bit bright. Of, bit of bl- I do like bright. Yeah, I do love bright. my yeah. brightness. Yeah. You see my bright colours. Yeah. I do love my bright colours. Yeah. I do. I love to go to the gym, and I love to wear bright pink, bl- bright blue, red. Yeah. And you'll see lots of girls in black, and then I will be all flamboyant. Um, but you know, you see girls at the gym, and it's true. You do see girls at the gym in a lot of makeup. Mm. And I think this is, you know, this comes from a deep insecurity mm, because absolutely. a lot of those girls, they don't have the self-confidence. They wear the makeup as the mask, you know, and it doesn't matter whether they're going to the shops to buy a loaf of bread or, you know, some milk or something. They, sorry, I'm just being attacked attack. by a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Go. <laughs> um, the wonders of the garden. Um, you know, so, that, so they, they wear their makeup going shopping. They wear their makeup um, dropping the kids off at school. Mm. They wear their makeup definitely at work. They wear it at the gym. They won't let people see them mm. without their mask. Mm. And so if, if that's because they're insecure and they don't feel comfortable without their mask on, mm. then they're not going to go to the gym without their mask. Because they're, if they're highly insecure and they lack confidence, then why would they let all the guys at the gym see them without a mask? You know, all those guys, you know, the bodybuilders, the beautiful looking guys, the beautiful looking girls. If you're an insecure female, especially, and you do see men that obviously don't wear makeup in the same way, but if you're an insecure female, why would you go to the gym without your best outfit on, without your hair done, and without your lippy on? Mm. So, you know, I've never been one of that category of women because I sweat and, the, you know, I rub my hands and my well, makeup will go everywhere. Surely it's difficult. I mean, I've, I've never worn makeup to the gym often. <laughs> but I'm, functionally, I'm sure it feels horrible if you have makeup on and you're trying to do any sort of um, exercise that's going to cause your body temperature to go up or your sweat. It's, it's got to be uncomfortable. Yeah, and it probably is. And, you know, I... So it's going to stop you well, giving 100% sure. 
possibly. I, 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 to be honest, I couldn't say because I've never done that. Mm. My my opinion is if I went to the gym with makeup on, I'd be thinking about my you know, my pores getting blocked, and I'd be thinking about you know getting pimples or something like that. Mm. But again, people who wear makeup all the time, it's all they know. It's a habit. It's a habit, and their face feels the same whether they're at the gym or at work or at mm. the supermarket or dropping the kids off. So you've got to think about what's their frame of reference. Yeah. And like I said, you know, really, I think it's about trying to understand what is their insecurity. Why are they so, you know, concerned about being mm. in the gym? Why are they, um, you know, what what is the, the self confidence that they're lacking, yeah. or why are they lacking self confidence? And really supporting them through that. And then, you know. Are they doing it because they want to be the peacock in the gym and attract yeah, everybody? Yeah, it's a deliberate, yeah. So they deliberate could be deliberate, attention. or is it that they're doing it because they are deeply insecure and they need help and support? And if they're in that category, are they in the right place? And like I said to you, I got a, you know, this friend of mine, always bought the best, always had the best, most expensive, had to go to the most expensive gym. Now, so she picked this, and truly an amazing place, an amazing gym, beautiful swimming pool, every sort of facility, you know, saunas, um, infrared saunas, everything, ice baths, the whole works, a spa, you know, beauty salon, everything. So it's spectacular, very expensive, and it was the place to be seen. Hmm. So she wanted to go to that <laughs> gym. To be seen. To be seen. Yeah. Um, but it was in a location that was well away from where she lived, well away from where she worked. So the challenge was she, she paid a membership, she went along, she did her induction, she got a programme, she enjoyed it, she loved the place and she fitted in perfectly. Mm. But because it was so far out of her normal, you know, routes and routines, mm. she never made it. Yeah. So she spent six, six months while she paid a membership yeah. and I think she probably went five times. Mm. So, it, you know, in her case, it just didn't fit. Yep. for her um, but you um, know I, I think a lot of it you know probably stems back to childhood yeah and we, sorry we used to call them sleepers when you know when in the gym industry we used to call them sleepers and probably half of our membership base were sleepers they were the the payers but they're not the players yeah so they would pay their monthly fee because they joined up on a whim um, because it was the place they wanted to be seen or their friend dragged them along but they paid their membership fee diligently but they never actually turned up and Unfortunately, the gym industry for a long period there made a lot of its money mm. on getting a whole bunch of people in the door, <coughs> signing them up, yep. on, on the presumption that at least half of them wouldn't actually come along to the gym because they couldn't service that number of people. Yeah. They wanted them to pay but not play. So, yeah, sorry. So, digress. Well, no, it's, it, it's an interesting digression, isn't it? Because if that's, you know, if that's anybody that we know, I'd be saying to them, you know, quit your membership it's not the right place for you or it's like not the right type of exercise for yep. you it's not the right environment for you mm. and find something you actually enjoy and that's what we always say we always say yeah, one, of, one of our principles is do what you love do what you love <laughs> and yeah. unfortunately in a lot of cases people choose or are coerced into an exercise program or a gym or a class or something that other people think they would love mm. or other people want to drag them along to but it's not what they love or Yep. Other people say will work for them. Yeah, yeah. Because the experts there, the lounge experts. Maybe something's yeah, maybe something's worked for you, mm. but it doesn't mean to say that I'll enjoy it or it will work for me. Mm. Um, but and again, that's like I said. I think it goes back to childhood. I I remember so it's a bit of a story. I remember as a kid. Um, so I was I was pushed into exercise as a kid. Mm. Now I love exercise now because I found my passion. I found what you know what excites me and what's fun and what motivates me. Um, but as a youngster, the first, I guess the first real experience was gymnastics. Mm. Now, I love gymnastics. You know, kids, a lot of kids like throwing themselves around, doing the handstands. Little girls love cartwheels. Mm. But I entered the sport when I was eight. So I was a bit behind a lot of the girls who were start at age three. So I went along and I went to this club where they were all very good. They were highly competitive, did a lot of um, displays and that sort of thing and I was always quite a chunky muscly kid I was small so I was the right size for a gymnast yes. but I was very powerful <clears throat> yep. so I was great on the powerful movements things like the vault and the, the trampoline and the rings wasn't so great when it came to the flexibility didn't have the flexibility in my legs or my back and so I went along and it, I always felt a bit awkward because you had these beautiful, graceful females who were you know, slim and 
and I was slim but chunky yeah, yeah. so I never felt like I fitted in but then what happened is you know my mum bless her she got involved in the gymnastics group and she got involved with the people who ran it and so I ended up going along and it, there were long sessions we would do five hours on a Saturday we, we would do long long sessions but I was going along because my mum had a social network there oh uh, okay Yes. So given the so I did enjoy gymnastics, but then it progressed. That wasn't too bad. The second experience was far worse as I went to athletics. And I started off in athletics and I think probably about age eleven. And the first couple of years really quite enjoyed it. Did a bit of everything. And that was fine. I was just learning. I was learning to run and I was learning to jump and throw and, and that that was all good. But around age thirteen I got asthma. And a lot of kids get asthma around that age. And my type of asthma was the type of asthma that you don't get all the time, you only get when you exercise. And specifically for me, when I ran. So there I was at athletics, and I had what they called exertional asthma. I got asthma when I ran. So if I did a 400 meter run, my chest would tighten up, my throat would constrict, couldn't get air into my lungs, I would wheeze and I would have almost like an asthma attack. The mucus would build up and when I you know I would be literally breathing like <laughs> <laughs> after about 300 meters and 400 meters I'd be I'd be out. So I was still forced to do athletics because you don't quit in my mum's world she was an army sergeant <laughs> you do yes. not quit I can imagine I can imagine so I started age 11 age 13 some of that came through actually the inherited it's, bit. it's all here it's all here it's all deep inside do not quit deeply bit. ingrained do yeah. not quit I still believe in that but um, but yes I was pushed into it and had to continue and then cross country season would come along and I remember from when I was when I first went into it I was quite good at cross country and then this asthma hit, and all of a sudden I went from being at the front of the pack to being right at the back of the pack, because you put me with this exertional asthma into the cold. I grew up in the UK, mm. in the north of the UK, where it was cold and wet. Mm. The winters were probably zero to five degrees and wet most of the time. Yeah. And you do cross country in the winter. So I turn up for a one and a half mile or a couple of kilometer cross country run in the blizzards, in the ice, in the rain, and the weather would be hurting my chest, and I'd set off on the run within a couple of hundred meters, and everybody would sprint off. Within a couple of hundred meters, I was wheezing, you know, almost in tears, and I was at the back of the pack. And I was, I was used to being at the front of the pack, so all of a sudden I'm at the back, but I'm not allowed to quit. And again, my mum gets involved in the committee <laughs> and the social network. Yep, of course. And she becomes a judge. She becomes a parent helper. And she yes. does all of these things. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, you know, here I am, age 13, that tender age, just going into my teenage years. And I'm forced to do these cross countries, which are hurting me. I'm at the back of the pack, they're knocking my self confidence. So, to be honest, that whole experience, I'm grateful for now because it's made me the sort of person who doesn't quit mm. i'm strong i'm resilient fuck i don't care if i'm last mm. it, i'll i'll grow from it mm. but at the time i hated it with a passion so, and, I, and i went right through till i was mm. 18 when i moved away and i went to university <laughs> you ran away <laughs> um, i pretty much ran away to university yeah. but it was 18 to 13 to 18 that's years yeah. doing exercise I hated. So what's the impact though? So if you know, if we take the play that out, so mine was a bit different, mine by judo and soccer. Um, but they were they were sports that I loved. And so mm. a different a different upbringing, both the soccer was something I loved to do and family were very supportive and I was allowed to do it and not do it if I didn't want to. Um, and they're both there was a team sport, so I enjoyed the team bit. wasn't very good at it, but I enjoyed the team piece. Um, and then judo was the self-confidence build. It was, it was a martial art, it was a sport, it was a confidence piece. So my memories of sport or exercise as a kid were fond memories, mm. yeah, were positive memories. So I didn't get that negativity around being forced or 
made to do something that was uncomfortable. Mm. So how does the choices that we make as kids or the choice that our parents make for us as kids, how does that then play into as adults, whether we're successful or challenged in choosing exercise? You know, I, I think there's a few things. I think the first thing is, even if you're forced into it as a kid, what it does is it, it does build a level of fitness that, you know, basically lasts mm. your whole life. Because I certainly know that myself and anybody I work with who's been fit as a kid, they have that memory, they have that muscle memory, and mm. they have the ability to get back to that point. They know that they can do it. Yeah. It's a lot harder if you've never exercised as a kid. It's a lot harder when you're an adult to get into a regular exercise mm. program and achieve that level of fitness. Yes. So, so sedentary so, kids are challenged and often become sedentary adults. Yeah, I think so. Because it just plays through. I think it plays through and they need a lot more support often to find what they yep. enjoy yep. and to be good at. But then I think the second side is if you've been in exercise and you've loved it and you've enjoyed it, then you've already got a feeling for what works for you. Mm. So as an adult, if you're looking for a type of exercise that works, you're probably going to go back to the things that you've enjoyed as a child. There'll be some common themes in there. And that's probably just a point that's probably a good it's a good checkpoint. When you as an adult you know, decide all of a sudden I want to get in shape, I want to get well and do some exercise, do some movement, it's probably a good checkpoint to then think back before you go along to your mate's fitness class and think, what, what did I do as a kid that I liked? What did I dislike? What was I good at? What was uncomfortable? What was, you know, what, what, what really excited me? Was it team? Was it individual? Was it competitive? Was it endurance? Was it, you know, weight bearing? And then that will give you a bit of a, a snapshot of what could be mm. the best direction to go in. I think that's exactly right. Mm. Because if whether you did something that you enjoyed or you did something that you didn't enjoy, yeah. um, if you didn't enjoy exercise, then you're probably going to have you know rebelled at some point and yeah. stopped exercising. Yeah. So now just do it, get back into it. Yeah. You know the logic, you've mm. heard it all before. So just do some exercise, yeah. find a movement that yeah. you enjoy. And so I think I think there's a key there, the just do it bit, because we have, we have a lot of people and we meet a lot of people who spend a shitload of time researching the sort of exercise and thinking and planning and talking and debating hmm. about the sort of exercise or movement they should do when they want to get each other. And by the time they've done their research and done their thinking, they've almost lost that window of enthusiasm and that just do it theme, it's like you've, you know it's you, you know exercise is needed. Yeah. There is, you know, there's no debate around whether exercise is important. It's just a matter of finding what you love and just doing it. And this, you know, you said what what really gives results and what really gives success. Mm. The people that have the most success, in my opinion, are those that say, right, this is what I am passionate about. It's what I enjoy. It's what yeah. I can get out of bed for. Mm. And it may not be the high intensity, it may not be the perfect exercise. But you're doing something. But you're going to do it. And yeah. you're going to do it every day. And you're going to come mm. out the other side saying, wow, I feel good. Because mm. that was fun. Yeah. So find something you enjoy. Find something that's fun. And as you said, find something that fits your needs. So if you prefer a team sport, or you prefer working out with a buddy, yeah. or you prefer something like dancing, mm. or long walks, or you like solitary exercise, Find something that fits you, fits your personality. And, and fits your interest. lifestyle. Because and if it doesn't fit, if you've got kids and family commitments, but you think you should go and do a gym class, but doing that gym class screws up the kids and the family and the commitments, yeah. it's always going to be external pressures. Yeah. Whereas if you have to, if you do a workout at home, which can fit in with the kids and the family and the lifestyle, that may be a better option and you're going to enjoy it because of those pressures and the noise from the kids and the family and the lifestyle is not going to you know, make you feel negative about it. That's it. So that's making it fit. Everybody at the end of the day is unique mm. and their situation, their context yep. is unique. So yep. think about yourself, yep. think about your context, come up with ideas and then just try them, do it. If one doesn't work, there'll be another one out there and don't beat yourself up about the fact that that mm. dance class didn't work yeah. out. Go and look for something else. Maybe yoga's better for you. Yep. Maybe running's better for you. Maybe walking's better. Start, make the commitment, have a go. Just do it. If it doesn't work, <laughs> move on to the next one. Excellent. All right, let's go. Cool, let's go exercise. <laughs> <laughs>